What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot of stuff we need to talk about. We have Tropical Storm Franklin that is reorganizing. We have Invest 92L. We have the Gyre that is expected to come uh, over Central America and develop as soon as it gets to the Caribbean. And we have the remnants of Emily. And we have two new areas of interest that some models have been picking up on that we need to absolutely share with you. So here's what we have to start. We have this area of interest right here, which now, has a, the time I'm recording this, has a 50% chance of formation in the next seven days. It had a 20% chance of formation at 8 o'clock last night. Now it's 50 and 10% in the next 48 hours. That's a huge jump up, and it's expected to potentially either impact the Yucatan or Cuba and then head towards Florida. We have Tropical Storm Franklin that currently, as of the latest advisory, has a 50 mile, has 50 mile per hour winds. However, I've been looking at some stuff that has recently been coming up, and I believe it is stronger than it than this is act, that actually is. In the next advisory, it'll be it'll be up to around 60 miles per hour. Tropical storm force winds extend 105 miles from the center, pressures 1,001 millibars as of the latest advisory. But I've been looking at Hurricane Hunter reconnaissance that have been going into this. And they've been showing some uh, some values right here. The pressure's down. First of all, the pressure's down to 999 millibars, right here. So that's pretty interesting in itself. Second thing we're seeing is we saw an SFMR value of around 55 knots. A couple others around 50. Uh, so we'll have to absolutely pay attention to them. A couple of them did get flagged. However, here's what we have for the drop send right here. A drop send in the max wind band recently, uh, yeah, recently uh, confirmed that at the surface you have 48 knot winds, which equate to uh, which equate to almost uh, about fi I think it's about 56 miles per hour, or about 55, 56 miles per hour. So it's definitely looking like it's going to get upgraded in the next advisory. If not now, it'll likely get upgraded, I'd say, by around uh, 1, p uh, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. So certainly to pay att something to pay attention to as time continues to go on. If we go ahead and show you the cone, obviously this is expected to strengthen into a hurricane. It's actually expected to strengthen into a hurricane by Saturday, and it is expected to traverse the Atlantic as at least a Category 1, maybe a Category 2 hurricane. We'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. Remnants of Emily still 70, 70, 70 expected to develop. And just and 92L still 2040. And then we have some other um, tropical waves that are coming off the coast of Africa that could potentially develop. We're going to go ahead and show you those. We'll show you the CMC first to kind of give you an understanding of what I'm talking about. Here's the CMC. This is what we have going on. We have this gyre that's moving off uh, into the Caribbean and Cuba. It is expected to at least intensify and strengthen potentially up to a Category 1 hurricane before it impacts the area around Naples, Sarasota, that area over there. So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on, according to the CMC. CMC also has a tropical wave coming off in the next 48 hours and developing in the main development region. By five days out, it gets down to a 998 millibar strong tropical storm. Another tropical wave comes off and starts in organizing very quickly as time continues to go on. And this thing is gets down to a hurricane as it's approaching the Lesser Antilles. It is expected to take a bit of a northward turn before it gets there due to the weakening Bermuda High move, transitioning towards the Azores High. But the CMC is also showing development with this system right here. 995 millibar potentially category one hurricane right there we'll have to pay attention to it for sure so that's what we have going on with the cmc the cmc has been pretty aggressive so far but even the icons picking up on it to some extent it's not as strong as the cmc had it before but it definitely is showing it there the icon has this thing at least this area of interest making landfall in cuba and then towards South Florida, potentially Miami could get some tropical storm impacts before it moves parallel to the Carolina coast and then get drifts out to sea after that. But it's also showing these two areas of interest starting to organize and develop. And basically what I'm noticing here is the weaker these systems are, It'll depend on who and where it gets impacted because the Bermuda High is expected to weaken and transition back to the Azores High and allow all these tropical systems, at least the strong ones, to push up to the north. 
So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. If we go ahead and show you the latest European run, we'll also talk about that as well. But we'll mainly be talking about Franklin and that Caribbean gyre that's moving off. So here's the situation with Franklin right here. Franklin is expected to strengthen to a strong tropical storm at least in the next 48 hours, and then get up to hurricane strength about 60 hours out, according to what I am seeing right here. So definitely something to monitor as time continues to go on. And then this thing starts to organize and develop, strengthens up potentially to a Category 1 hurricane. That's what I've been seeing, and potentially impacts just north of Tampa Bay, and then moves out to sea, uh, parallels the Carolina coast before drifting out to sea, and that's pretty much the latest land impacts we'll see. And the Europeans also potentially been picking up on this area of interest 92L and having this potentially organize and strengthen. However, it's a bit unrealistic for me to see this get pushed back down unless the Bermuda High just re-strengthens considerably, if you know what I mean. So we'll certainly have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. But for now, we're looking at a lot of scenarios and a lot of situations where we could see a lot more systems to organize and develop. So we'll have to go ahead and wait and see how that goes right there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you what's really working for and against this stuff. The global sea temperatures obviously are working for this. As you can see, we're seeing at least for the Caribbean system, 29 plus degrees Celsius or 84 plus degree Fahrenheit all the way up until Florida, 30 plus degrees Celsius from the Yucatan and, and Cuba all the way to the Gulf. So certainly something we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on. OHC is off the charts right here. Let me show you real quickly. This is 125, uh, 150, 175 plus in the Caribbean Sea as this approaches either Yucatan or Cuba. Then it moves through the loop current and potentially, uh, and depending on where this go uh, goes, it's going to be moving through a lot of very, very, very warm water. So we'll have to continue to monitor it. The wind shear, as you can see, the wind shear has been pretty stubborn. However, it is forecast to weaken over the next couple of days as the system moves into the Caribbean, which will make, mean that this has very great conditions, at least in the short term, to organize and develop. So here's the shear forecast going into it. Here's the 0Z European. The European's shear forecast in the next 12 hours has the shear starting to push north and weaken quite a bit. And then by the next 24 hours, it, the shear pretty much intrudes the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, leaving the Caribbean pretty open for development, at least what we with what we have right here. Same thing, the shear continues to get pushed up to the north, and if we t go ahead and show you the relative humidity, yeah, there are great conditions for development. There are some people out there saying that this could develop as soon as it gets into the Caribbean. Yeah, I could definitely see that uh, start to happen, primarily because of how great the conditions are and how high the OHC is. So we'll have to pay attention to that. We also have to pay attention to the MDR over here because there is some dry and moist air slots uh, right there. There is still a little bit of Sahara dust that's going to continue throughout the whole season and a lot of, and some dry air. However, it's much better for development compared to where we were like like in July. So this is all things we need to monitor. And then as the system starts to move into the Gulf of Mexico, some dry air could potentially impact it, which in, at least as it enters the Gulf. But by the time it gets into the Gulf and approaches Florida, it should not have any issues with dry air whatsoever until it puts, maybe it gets uh, to here in the Carolinas when it gets pushed out to sea. So we'll have to monitor this continue, uh, a situation as time continues to go on. We're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out. helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.